Okay, welcome to the show. This is TED Talks Too Much. And we've got a great one for you today. I'm Ted Moss, ex-waiter at a sorority house, stand-up comedian, and your host. We are located in the OK Boomer Studios just outside of Flint, Michigan. That's right, Flint, Michigan's water wonderland, where they're still wondering when they'll get some clean water. But while we all wait for that to happen, let's talk. And on today's show, we're going to be groundbreaking. Our guest is our first lady comedian. She hails from a small town and produces big shows. Knowing absolutely nothing about stand-up comedy, she has taken her sense of humor and drive and turned it into a business. We'll be back with Melissa Hager right after this. All right, before we start the show today, I want to talk to you a little bit about the coronavirus. A lot of people are upset, but don't you worry. Things could be worse. Just remember, before it ends, don't go out and see your friends. That's right, just stay at home. Enjoy your family. Hunker down. Now you are going to run out of toilet paper. And I know you're worried about that. Let me help. You think you can't afford a bidet? You might not ever get rich. Think about it. You got a I'm public bidet down at the corner. You got some quarters. No That's right. Grab the whole fam family. Head on down to the corner to the, the car wash. Give them all a spray today. Take Uncle Ray, give him an extra spray, make his day. He'd like that. In the meantime, listen to Ted Talks Too Much. Me and my friends will be here working hard to make you laugh. You keep it clean, we'll keep it funny. Listen and share Ted Talks Too Much. And before you know it, this too will pass. And now, on with the show. So I'm super excited about the guest we have in studio today. She's just a farm girl from a teeny town next to a small city that has taken her upbeat sense of humor and never-ending drive and has turned it into a thriving business, providing entertainment for thousands of people. She's just got to be one of the happiest people I know. And you know what? I'm just thrilled to have her with me in studio today. So let's give a great big OK Boomer Studio welcome to my good buddy, Melissa Hager. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Melissa. I am so glad you're here. I am super glad I'm here. Matter of fact, I didn't even think you were going to come. You didn't? No. Well, you know what? It's hard to get people to come out during the coronavirus. It is. It's kind of a thing right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of an old shady guy. Living on the edge. (laughs) (laughs) You notice how sickly I'm looking at this moment? (laughs) I noticed the dark circles under your eyes. I know. I wasn't going to say anything. (laughs) His immune system's broke down. You are with the wrong person, girl. You have to know that. That I'm probably infected. So the oh fact my God. that you even let oh me in God. your house, I'm surprised. You know, <laughs> you know, Billy Reno does that thing, that joke at the end of his set, and he says uh, something about uh, that he was tested for S- STDs. <laughs> and he said, I'm just saying that because I'm willing to catch anything you got. You know? so, <laughs> in this case, that's not true, though. I don't want to catch whatever you have. I, I don't want you to either. Yeah. I don't want you to. I did do shows yet last weekend. Did but you? then that was the end of it. Yeah, how so, big how big were the shows? Uh, Friday wasn't very big, but Thursday was sold out and Saturday was sold out. So right. it's just, but we hadn't. We I live up north in Michigan in a little yeah. nice pocket where there's still no confirmed cases. So yes, I'm well, hopeful. Maybe they just aren't testing. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, that you're seems, all sick. You just aren't that talking just about seems it. Seems to me that <laughs> my nose is running. That's okay. It's very attractive. <laughs> 
<laughs> is that the first sign? Yes, that's the first sign. We're going down, folks. We're yeah. going to die right on the Here air. Here we go. I'll let you know in 14 days. Well, well we, should, we should explain things first. Mm-hmm. You're, you're a lady that does stand-up comedy mm-hmm. in Southeast Michigan, but you also produce a North. number of shows. North. Northeast Michigan. You're well, north. Uh, Good I, God, have you ever been the to the thumb. UP? Yeah, I guess you you're right. You're in the Thumb? You're in Frankenmuth, for yeah. God's sakes. Well, you're I barely mean, north of Flint. Southeast, I think of like Detroit and St. Clair, and isn't that southeast? You know, it takes nine hours to get from here to the tip of Michigan. Did you know that? Okay, yeah. I'm How way long does it take to get to your place? Maybe Let's an call hour? It Mid-Michigan. All How right. about that? We'll just go. <laughs> Everybody wants to disassociate themselves from. Southeast Michigan. You know what? That's why they call it West Michigan. Right. They don't want to be in it with the rest of us. Like, <laughs> you people are, I mean, we are part of them. Yeah. We're West not Michigan. Not me, yeah. not me. Anyhow, Melissa, you, you do a lot of shows. How many shows do you do? Well, the whole, so I started a company called The Comedy Series, and the whole thing was started to give me something to do once every other month or so that was going to be the plan but you were bored we have (laughs) we called it a we called it a comedy club that doesn't like we're homeless we're a homeless comedy club okay (laughs) but really the technical word is traveling so we go to different bars and restaurants and help them bring in extra income by selling food and drink sure on nights that they wouldn't otherwise have a lot of people there right so it was beneficial to everybody and it gave us a place to do comedy which in mid-michigan there isn't a lot of places there wasn't at the time yeah you know when i when i did your show the only time i was invited Mm -hmm. to do your show (laughs) We Where were in, you won a contest. I, I know. Very winner, exciting. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We're never having you again. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> but uh, we were in a we were in a wonderful theater. Mm-hmm. What, what was it in Frankmuth? What was the name yep, of that place? Fisher Theater. It was yeah. actually built in a in a super religious town for people that wanted to do something that wasn't associated with the church. That's the whole like point of that. Like tell dirty jokes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's the whole laughs> this is totally not associated with the church. <laughs> yeah, Let that. me tell some dick jokes. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Welcome to my nightmare. That's exactly. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Perfect. No, that was a, that was a great show. Honestly, one of the best managed shows I've ever been in. Aww. Well, and I'm not saying that just to, to stroke you. Not that I wouldn't want to, but. <laughs> I, but honestly, you guys, you had uh, backstage, you had food for us to mm-hmm. eat and beverages for us to have. Yeah. You had a professional stage with a professional backdrop, good lighting, a wonderful little theater, packed audience, all there to laugh. You were managing the crowd with people. You were managing the sound with somebody else. You were hosting the show. Yeah. I mean, it was a professional, professional show. Oh, thanks, Ted. No, it was wonderful. It's, it's important to us. Like, it's very important no, to us. No, I know. I got up there and I thought, no wonder I'm never invited to this thing. This is totally out of my league. This was no, honestly, I, I, honestly, it was probably the most professional show I've ever been on. Very cool. Thank yeah. you. I well, was on a really good one out in L.A. Yeah. Uh, and it was a professional stage and the guy had been on, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, some special on, on TV. Yeah. Uh, so it was good comedians and it was good stage, but it wasn't better run than your show. Oh, I really like that show. makes me feel great. Yeah. Well, um, Abby and Adrian, two of my best friends, they jumped on board with me right from the beginning. And then, um, Abby's husband, Jeff is our sound guy Oh. and they have been amazing. So we went from once every other month to once a month to now, up until the coronavirus thing, pretty much Thursday through Saturday or Sunday, every week we're yeah. booked. And so now not everybody's at every show and we've trained a couple new people, but I always have one or two people with me to help with the crowd because yes. if the audience doesn't have a good time, they're not going to come back. Right. And and beyond the performers, the audience is so important that it's a great setting for them. Someone's got to turn down the lights. Someone's got to take the tickets. Somebody's got to seat them so that the front doesn't end up empty. Right. You know, that all that stuff. And if someone's talking and, and loud, someone's got to go stand next to them and get them to shut the hell up. I know. You know? <laughs> no, no. You know what? Every show should have that. I think it's, it's wonderful that you thought that through and probably because you're a stand-up comic mm-hmm. and you've been through bad shows. Right. I remember the first time I went to Grand Rapids and uh, they do a weekly show there, the Sunday Night Funnies, and yeah. Brian runs it, nice guy. Yeah. But the audience was 
seated, so there was a big gap in the middle. Oh, yeah. I was performing to five empty tables in front of me, some to the left, some to the right, and some in the back. Yeah. And it just made it hard. And That's a bummer. Yeah. You know, Joel, in his class, he talks about that. Mm-hmm. Part of the job is seating the audience properly. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so they'll get the most out of the show. Yeah, for sure. Well, anyhow, I had a great time. Good. And uh, I was lucky enough to have a good set. And I don't know why, but they were with me on that journey. And that doesn't always happen with my style. Kind they of. loved so, you. Yeah. They yeah. loved you. Poor vision, bad judgment. <laughs> <laughs> what a crowd. My kind of people. Not the case. Well, let me let me ask you this. Uh, how did you get in comedy? Tell me, hold it. First, let's talk about your background, who you were growing up, where you grew up, and how it evolved to bring you to the point where you're doing stand-up comedy before you were producing shows. Well, some people would say I'm the most unlikely stand-up comedian, and some people would say, wow, really? we've been waiting for you to get into this. So yeah. what, what took you so long? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're kind of a, 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 a upbeat funny person you laugh a lot you got a great personality I would think you'd be a natural Uh, well I was uh I in high school I was the best well actually grade school it all started in grade school my grade school principal still has like PTSD from my April Fool's jokes (laughs) and that was just always a thing Matt what did you do what did you do the worst one I did the worst one I did is I took her car and we took it. Hold it, you're in elementary school yeah, well, and you took her car? I, well, I grew up on a farm. How old were you in elementary school, I was, <laughs> Melissa? <laughs> Just saying. Good question. I think this is illegal. <laughs> this is a crime. So by 10, 11 years old, I started driving tractors because I was, uh, I grew up on a farm. And a you big, were working. A you were actually farm. working yes, the I was, farm. I was a hoer. I loved hoeing. Oh my I, God. <laughs> we could go places with that. Thank you. Put your money away <laughs> in, All right. in a field. <laughs> yeah. I was hoeing in in a field. Yes. Um, and so I was of the last couple years where you could get a farmer's license at 13 years old. Oh, to drive. So I could drive a vehicle up to 50 miles oh. as long as it was for farm purposes. At what age? 13. Oh my God. 13. Oh my God. Can you believe that? I would have dated you just to go parking. <laughs> Get your mama's car. We're going. We're out of here. <laughs> so I was still in eighth grade and it oh was like, gosh. you know, April Fool's is coming. Yes. So I took the principal. She had an open door policy. I went to a small private school, which made it worse. We were supposed to be super like Christian. Yeah. You know? And so I went and visited her that morning and, and oh, good morning. And I got her keys off her desk. And then I took her car and we moved it. Hold and then, were you visiting just to get the keys? Did you yes, know that was the yeah, idea? Yeah, that was the and whole And the plan. keys just happened to be on her desk, yeah, not in her they purse? They just always were laying there on her desk. Oh, there was just, And then oh. I even managed to get them back in there. Oh, uh, you kind of studied this up front, didn't yeah. you? Oh, I did you homework. Were, you were plotting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good God. <laughs> so all I did was move it around to the other side of the school and behind yeah. the shed, whatever. So <laughs> <laughs> And underneath some hay. <laughs> and now I had, uh, what did we have? have track practice after school i had practice where it, and i told everybody i was like everybody get to the front of the school and watch mrs bickle come out oh god and she walked out with her keys in hand oh my god and she's just looking around and you could just see the color in her face leave you know and it's just like where's my car then she went in then she came back out uh, then she went in again <laughs> it was crazy did you film this it was cr- this is before cell phones yeah, and stuff it was. So, yeah i wish we barely had vcrs oh god it would have been so hilarious <laughs> oh, to film been this. Awesome. that's hilarious so every time i hit some new level of success or some new thing happens she's always like yeah we figured <laughs> yeah yeah i figured you're gonna do something crazy <laughs> yeah so that was one of my best ones. But my dad, ever since I was little, me and my dad, April Fool's Day was just the day that we would spend. I mean, he had me arrested one time. The police came and arrested oh, me. Oh, I love your dad. And oh. I was bawling my eyes out. You and were crying and he still let him just take you yep, away. Exactly. What a mean I man. Know, oh, he's my God. Terrible. This is a farmer. <laughs> my mom <laughs> like, and dad. Whatever. My She'll mom get over and dad it. went through a horrible, bitter, nasty divorce. And I lived in the little house that my mom got. While they were getting a divorce, I lived there in April Fool's one day. I One year, I called him that my mom had gotten a letter that there was a paper that was unsigned, so they were technically still married, and yeah. that she needed to get in right away to sign this paper. And I heard my dad say words I had never even heard before. Like, yeah. they were all in German, and I know they were <laughs> swear words. He was so upset, he hung up on me, and then I thought, oh boy, he's going to call his lawyer, I better get on this. So anyways, that's just been a thing. Yeah. Our whole, our whole life. So my senior year of high school, 
I was asked to run for class president and I really didn't want to do that. They're like, oh, come on. You put on such a great prom last year. Yeah. You need to, you need You're to do this. You're a natural this. promoter. You, you really are. <laughs> they're like, you, we need you. And I said, hey, eh. and then the class advisor, I don't know how she knew this and no one else knew this about me, but I didn't know it even about myself. She said, listen, Melissa, there's three people at graduation that get to give a speech. The Val Victorian, the Salutatorian, and the class president. Aha. Uh-huh. You can I, get up and talk. Yeah, I and lit you right like up. This. Yes, yeah. I love it. I love it. And I was like, really? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. So then I ran and I yeah. won. Yeah. And I remember I worked that whole entire year on that speech the whole year because I wanted people to laugh and I wanted them to cry and I wanted like I wanted it to I practiced it on my family a hundred million times how long was the speech for God's sake you know I gotta find it I have it somewhere oh, I need yeah. to find it because I wonder if it was really even as good as I in my head I think it maybe was maybe you shouldn't but, find it maybe, <laughs> no, maybe right now you're a hero you're gonna go to zero like career. what the hell yeah. <laughs> I sucked no, I was she not was funny at awful. all she was awful <laughs> you know what well I just came across uh, my first set I ever did in stand-up comedy and I was awful. I thought I was very <laughs> funny and charming. Not so much. I thought, what? How you really said this shit? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I think it's amazing that people in comedy have similar backgrounds. I was president of my class in sixth grade and I had to give a speech at graduation. Yeah. And it didn't bother me a bit. No. It was like, yeah, I like doing this yeah. kind of shit. Yeah. Actually, when I was uh, in first grade, um, I got in trouble. My parents went to the parent teacher conferences and they came back and I got in trouble Mm -hmm. for lying. Oh, well, it turns out that uh, when they let you do uh, show and tell in first grade, <laughs> eventually you run out of things to say. Oh, boy. So I was just making shit up. Oh, boy. I was like, I want to get up and say something. Yeah. But I think by nature, like you, mm-hmm. they say, hey, you want to talk? And you're like, yep. hell yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you do or not. Yeah. That's I, crazy. I actually, uh, you know, when you're in high school and you start going to all the career days yeah. and all that stuff, I yeah. actually thought that I was going to be, I wanted to go into radio. That was the first thing I wanted uh, to do. Sure. And then I remember at a career day, I found out how much money they made. And I was like, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> So, so then I, so then I decided, and I've always been a writer. I have tons of like little, when I was in second, third grade, I started writing little short books Yeah. and believe it or not, I have never read a book front to back still. This is so embarrassing. I'm 37 years old. I have aced every single book report I've ever done, and they've all been made up books. I have really? Never read an actual book. Really? It's oh awful. My, that that yeah. is awful. I actually, I, that's how I was when I went to college. Yeah. Turns out I'm dyslexic and can't read. See, I have a problem reading. Well, you know what? I, I will read, and then after a paragraph, I'll go, I got nothing. What of did that. I say? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You might be dyslexic but and I'm, don't know it. But I'm a great writer. I'm, I can yeah, definitely well, put a story together. Well, you think together. you are because you can't read the shit you wrote. <laughs> I know. Actually, you said. <laughs> when I was in 11th grade, I almost got busted by our English literary teacher, or whatever she was. She uh, gave me my book report back and she said, this was excellent. I would like to read this book. And, and there was, I, you just fucking made up the book. I was like, you would? She goes, please let me borrow this book. I can read it in a weekend. I promise you, I love reading. Please bring this in on Monday. That's hilarious. I was like, oh my God. So, then I went, <laughs> so you got to go home and I'm write like, a book I'm now. I'm like freaking out. I come back to school Monday. She's looking for it. I said, you're not going to believe this, but my grandma had a house fire last year. This oh, was Lord. actually one of her books in you her You kind of lost it. It had to go down with grandma. It went down in a house fire. Was grandma still alive uh, in the story? Because we're... Grandma so, died no, clutching grandma, the book. Gra- <laughs> <laughs> then I probably would have been busted. Yeah, I had to that, be at least truthful yeah. well, with something. Isn't this your grandma right here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just talked to your grandma. But yeah, so that was always. So then I was going to be a writer, like a like a newspaper writer and a radio person. I thought together, then I'll make enough money, not realizing that would cost me 16 hours out of every day. Yeah, right. So when I got out of high school, I just. I just didn't. I ended up meeting a guy and I got married. He had a sales business and we had a bunch of sales companies. And uh, that's what I did for a while and until I decided to start real estate. And I did real estate for 15 years. I loved it. Yeah. Well, you'd be good in sales. Yeah. I but how did, you, how did you end up doing stand-up comedy? At some point, yeah. you had to stop and think... 
I'm fucking funny. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> at I'm, least I think I am. Where do I go? Well, I mean, if, how if did you, that start? If you look at my customer list through my real estate career, it definitely was all these very fun, happy families. I didn't uh-huh. do well with the serious people. Yeah. And most people are the ones that spend the most money. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So my average sales price stayed pretty mediocre. Yeah, yeah. That's because the serious people didn't take me serious. So right. it didn't work. But uh, my grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary, which would have been like now, it would have been almost 12 years ago, 12, Uh 13 years ago. They wanted the grandchildren, the kids, wanted the grandkids to put on like a little skit or a play. Right. And I was all pumped and I'm the oldest grandchild. They're like, Melissa, you're in charge. Get your cousins together and do something. Well, no one would do anything. They were all shy. No performances. Nobody wanted to do anything. And I said, you know what? I'm going to roast grandma and grandpa. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call my great aunts and uncles. I'm going to get some info and we're going to roast grandma and grandpa. And you're going to talk shit about the grandparents. Yep. And they're going to be sitting Happy right anniversary. there. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Here's some shit about grandma and grandpa. You didn't know. And it, it was. I did find some shit oh out. God. And, and it was only supposed to be 20 minutes. It was supposed to be a 20 minute thing. It turned into 45 minutes oh of God. me talking into a little karaoke machine with a cord that was like two foot long. So every time I I got excited and moved around. I almost yanked the machine off the table and everyone was laughing and crying and wiping their tears. And afterwards, my great uncle Matt came up to me and he said, Melissa, that was like something you see on Comedy Central. I am not even joking. Why aren't you doing stand up comedy? And I was like, what stand up comedy? Like I didn't even that wasn't even. No, we didn't have cable when I grew up, so I never got you had to watch. never seen stand-up no, comedy? No, the only thing, the only stand-up comedy I had was when I was younger, we had a cassette tape of Bill Ingvall, Here's Your Sign. Oh, And we yeah. listened to that over and over. Me and yeah. my brother, when we were like riding around in the tractor. Yeah, yeah. We, and we'd laugh our butts off, but I didn't know that he was a stand-up comedian. Like, I didn't understand that's what he was. Right. And like Tim Allen, I had seen him on TV before. Right. Doing stand-up, but I thought it was a script someone wrote out, and he's just reading it really funny. Right, right. So... Then seven years go by. This is a long freaking story, folks. Seven Sorry about that. years go by. This is how she is. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> a friend of mine is throwing a party at her mom's bar for her 20th anniversary. Ah, in so now party you're life. at a bar. Now I'm at a bar and I she wants me to roast her at her party. Okay. And it okay. ended up turning into 45 minutes of comedy. Basically crowd work and with a little bit of planned out stuff and then now this is seven more years i've had this like thought in my head yeah and then that happened and i was like okay now we're doing it it's happening right let's just figure it out so you started with crowd work yeah 40, that, yeah like that's an hour. The, that's the opposite of most people most people just write jokes and then get up the nerve to interact with the crowd mm-hmm. Wow, that's And great. I have it all recorded. It is, again, I thought I killed it. They all loved it. Yeah, but right. when you listen to it, you're like, yeah. oh, God. Well, you know what? I think when you're talking about things that are actually happening in the moment, that it's always a lot funnier. Mm-hmm. It's better received. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's just, there's something. And that's somebody. where you started. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and my friend Carla, she was like, you have to do that more. So did you eventually go out to open mics then? Was that no. the next step? No, the next step was what? I booked a theater and I decided to start running a show. Holy shit. <laughs> I don't care what everybody else in the I world know. is doing. Well, I am funny. I, I didn't know what everyone else was doing. I didn't know there was anyone even around us doing it. That's how that's how naive I was. I just didn't know. It's not because I thought I was better than anybody. Yeah. I My mom. You were just making up your own path because you thought, I, I, I want to go was down a, there. Yeah, my mom lives in Clarkston, Michigan, which is only half hour from the Mark Ridley's Comedy Cafe. Sure. The best comedy club possibly in the United States. One of the States top 10, certainly. Is for sure. Yeah. And my mom said, you know what? Let's go to a comedy show at a comedy club that's been around a really long time. Right. And I said, okay. I had never seen line stand up ever. And who, ever. who was there? Do you remember who was there? Yep. Dave Landau was the headliner. Oh, Dave's and great. Matt Dave's Holt, local. And yeah. he's a great comedian. And Matt Holt was the opener. Oh. Yeah. And, and what'd so you think? I laughed so hard. I kept hitting my head on the metal pole. I was at like table 33 <laughs> where the metal pole is. And I was like, oh my God, this is so painful, but so amazing. <laughs> 
And but also I'm like looking around and I kept watching what was going on. Like, again, I didn't know him at the time, but Joel and yeah. I was watching all them guys. And I was like, OK, so they took tickets. They seated people. When the show started, the lights turned down. You're watching how the show I was managed. the right? whole thing. Yeah. And so then I was like, OK, we can do this. I can I can do this. I just need a couple girlfriends to help me. Sure. And I talked to Matt. Of course, Dave had like a super long line, so I didn't want to wait in line. So I went and talked to Matt because he yeah, had yeah, less yeah. people. Sure. And he gave me his card. He goes, yeah, get a hold of me. Maybe I can help you put on a show. Which I'm sh- now I know they hear that all the time. Right, right. But then when I actually called, he's like, holy shit, you're serious. Yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So our very first weekend was at that theater you were at. We right. sold out two shows Friday and two shows Saturday. On your first show. On my very first weekend. And it was just me and him. I did like 20 minutes and then he did like an hour. And... Then I was hooked. I was like, okay, we're doing this. Do you know you bypassed a whole lot of shit that most people go through? I know now. I mean, doing, honestly, doing open mics for 12 other open micers (laughs) where nobody's laughing. Right, right. I mean, usually people do that for years before they have big shows Mm -hmm. with packed audiences that are laughing. I mean, you you sidestepped the whole thing. I know. I And I feel super fortunate, but also I don't ever want anyone to think like it was on purpose and I thought I was better than anyone. No, that's, I just that's didn't fine. Know. It's just bad karma. I did. Some shit's going to happen to you. You're going to be on stage and it's some gonna shit's going to happen. It's going to catch up to me. <laughs> yeah, I think it almost has to because mm-hmm. the rest of us were yeah, out there it's suffering. it's fucking coronavirus. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Remind me to sneeze on you before you leave. Believe me, I got like $12,000 of tickets in Eventbrite I have to refund. And that's... I'm like, oh, how does that work? I don't yeah. have $12,000 anymore. Well, they gave it to you and you already spent it. Eventbrite sends you your money as people are buying tickets. They give you like a percentage of it. Yeah. Well, the comedy series, now that we're working every weekend, we have ongoing operating expenses. We have, first of all, we have an office that we rent. We also have uh, utilities. We pay for radio advertising. Just two weeks ago, I spent $900 in Facebook ads. Well, that money just automatically comes out. So. I mean, and I'm I'm not whining because I know people are in a way hell of a lot more hurt than I am. But there's some problems out there. Like well, it's it's hard to swallow. Yeah, you know, I owned a business for 30 years, and yeah. you have to take the bad times for the good. Yeah, that's for sure. why you have to be really profitable in the good times mm-hmm. because there's going to be bad times. Mm-hmm. I don't care what industry it mm-hmm. is. There are going to be times. There's going to be months. It's going to be six months, oh, and you yeah. think, why am I even doing this? Well, every year you come into some summer, June, yeah. July, August, and yeah. that's like the quiet time. And the comedy series just turned four years old, right. and we are finally starting to like tread on some good water. And yeah, then it right. just all crumbled. You know, that reminds me. I should apologize to you because I had I double booked myself and I had to pull out of one of your shows. You did. I know. I felt so. And bad. then all you do in the beginning is harass me that I never. I no, 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 no. Hire no. you. Well. Yeah, You're that, on the blacklist. The second list. show I was ever invited <laughs> to be on, I go and win the contest at the first show. Six months later, I get on the second show, but I double booked. You know what? In my six years doing comedy, mm-hmm. I pulled out of two shows. One, I was really sick. Aww. That one, I double booked, and I was supposed to feature for Billy, and he was going to record. Aww. And he wanted somebody to, he wanted to make somebody sure that. he knew. Well, he, yeah, and he wanted to make sure there was somebody up there that was going to make sure the crowd was laughing yeah. before they brought him up. And he, he, you know, we're buddies. And I said, yeah, okay, sure. I'd be glad to do that. Yeah. Not thinking about it too much, not putting it on my calendar, put you down. And then I kind of look at Billy's and I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. What? And I called him up. I said, dude, I don't even know what to do. Aww. He said, go do her show. I said, no, 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 I can't. I, of you course know, he would say I mean, that. Well, we traveled and toured the country for I three know. months. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt really, really bad. Anyhow, I apologize. That I, That's not like me, and I feel bad. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you never had me on another show, and now I've retired for stand-up, so... <laughs> All right, but you'll get yours. I'm just saying, you're next. (laughs) Hey, I I wanted to ask you about Frankenmuth, about living in Frankenmuth. Did you live on a farm outside of Frankenmuth? Yeah, I actually live, I grew up in a small town next door called Millington. Yeah, I know Millington. Yeah, that's actually where I'm from, and it's kind of a funny joke I do in the beginning because... Whenever I'm at a club or outside of my little area, I get introduced to the stage that I'm from Frankenmuth. Then when I come out, I let them know I'm actually from this other crap hole called Millington. Yeah. And, you know, Millington people, 
some of them get a little defensive, but I'm just kidding. It's just a joke, and it's a way for me to get, bring attention to that great little town. It's no, awesome. I, no, I think it's great. And yeah. so, yeah, this last summer, we actually moved to Frankmuth. So now I am a Frankmuth Eagle. My kids are going to school there. And, uh, oh, you and your husband moved there. We did move there, and it's been interesting. It's, it is definitely the culture in that town is unlike anything I've ever seen before. Oh, it is. Ever. It, it's, it's a little German town mm-hmm. that is really high on tourism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They have Pays tons a lot of, of the people. Bills. You know, I know people from Atlanta that come up every year mm-hmm. to go to Frankenmuth. Mm-hmm. And yeah, everything is, I mean, it's its old world German mm-hmm. uh, architecture throughout the whole town. Mm-hmm. And the town is run by a closed knit group of mm-hmm. German men yeah. that run the businesses. Now, right. I did some business uh, in Frankenmuth, mm-hmm. but the only way you do business in Frankenmuth is if you do business with people who are in Frankenmuth yep. and they will pay extra money to do business with you, but they're extremely loyal. Mm-hmm. They now, are. Honestly, I, I had to, in order to do business in Frankenmuth, I had to do business with a local electrician. I think it was, I'm going to say it was Nectarline Electric. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy Nate. Yeah. They're great people. Yeah, they are great yeah. people. And you know what? He he never really price checked me. He just mm-hmm. assumed that I was being fair with him. And if he if Nate took me in, we're getting that job. Yeah. We're not they're not bidding it out to him. He's getting right. the job and he gets to pick who's gonna do the job with mm-hmm. him. But that's the nature of the that little town. Yeah. And it's gotta be what, a town of maybe 20,000? Maybe. Maybe. I know. I don't know the numbers, but yeah, I don't. I got super fortunate. The lady that does my website and all my graphics, she's a, she went to Frank Muth. She's a big Frank Muth person. She actually runs 80s Fest and yeah. Big Country Fest. That's her family that puts those on. Right. She is the one that introduced me to enough people that we sold out all those shows. And again, right. I'm from Millington. They, it's not that they don't let outsiders in. They do, but you just got to work so hard to well, earn their trust. How far away is Millington? 10 miles? Yeah, about 15 minutes. You know, well, that's, we just went through a big thing talking about how Michael Moore isn't from Flint and he claims he is. Yeah, He's really he, from Davison. Yeah, right, right. And I hate him for it. So <laughs> I think you're doing right by telling people, no, I'm from Millington. Yeah, because yeah. you are or you aren't. Right. Especially Frankenmuth, because that's a close community. Yeah. So they've been, re- we've had the mayor at some of our shows. Now, you know, what we do when I'm outside, now the comedy series is reaching outside of Frankenmuth to several towns. Right. And when w- I would say most of our shows could be rated as a light R rating. We're like bush light. You okay? wouldn't let me on for a while because you thought I was too, too dirty. dirty. Yeah. So was I, hold on. Was I too dirty? I, they loved you. Yeah, I know it that. It was the right audience. In some cases, yes, you would have been. Really? Definitely. Because I don't think I'm gross dirty. No, I and that's not the case at all. I use dirty words in yeah, my comedy. Yeah, there's a though, lot of trigger. So words in Frankenmuth that we haven't been able to get them past. No, like, like Jew? A lot of people. <laughs> Should I say that? <laughs> Just saying. I think there's a reason you have the largest Christian <laughs> Christmas store right out at the peak. You got to pass it to get into the yeah, town. You actually go through a zapper that people, it's invisible as you, know you go I, through. When, when I was doing sales, I had a Jewish man in from uh, the East Coast and I thought, oh, they have really good chicken Mm -hmm. in this little town coming back from Saginaw. Let's go to Uh Frankenmuth. Not thinking that he was Jewish and not thinking we're going to pass the biggest Christmas (laughs) store in the world with all these Christian symbols. Uh Is that out there just to scare people away? (laughs) I mean, is there a reason that it's positioned where it's positioned? No. And they light up the crosses in Jesus all year long? (laughs) They're proud of it. Yeah, I know. I'm wondering it's like, beware. There, I mean, and this is... Are and, there any Jewish people that live in the, Frankenmuth? There's got to be. Come there on, no, do you know one? I don't, I do not. All right, but just I, saying. There, it is a diverse town. Love. Our neighbors are Asian. I'm just saying, like, it yeah, is... I bet they aren't Asian Jews. <laughs> Could be wrong, but don't oh know a lot God. of Asian Jews. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really, really hoping that the older gentleman that lives next to me, he's talking about downsizing and selling his house. And I'm trying to find a Mexican or black family to move in there. <laughs> You're so trying to diversify your yeah, neighborhood so like by my, kicking out your I, neighbors. Yeah, I live in a, oh on a corner. God. So it'd be the Asian family, the comedians, and then oh. like a Mexican family. I'm going to turn it into the ghetto right oh, there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Starting with people from Millington. <laughs> We're starting at the bottom. They're like, we shouldn't have let her in. Yeah. We shouldn't have let her in. Every which way is punching up for me. I'm from Millington. <laughs> Don't give me shit. 
No, um, here's the other dynamic that most people don't think about. In Frankenmuth, there is the biggest per capita uh, business owners as oh. the adults. So like when you look, you know, a lot of people own a small business or a large business in that town. So you think yeah. about the, the culture and I, and this is just a different thought and I haven't done all the research and I don't have all the big words for this, but right. it's something that I appreciate as a small business owner. My kids are now in a school where every single class they're in, there's several other kids that parents own a business that are entrepreneurs. So, yeah. So the yeah. conversation is just different. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just, I, no, I think that's really it's a great. different type of mindset when you're not punching a clock and you have to work every day to make sure money keeps coming in. It makes you different and your kids. Yeah. You know, having owned a business for a number of years, I go to a lot of these small towns and there's all these, I'm going to call them hobbyists. They think they're business owners, but they're really, you know, buying old furniture and painting it white and right. selling it. But they really aren't making any money. Right. Really, it's a hobby. Mm -hmm. They're just making enough to pay their rent mm -hmm. and buy a sandwich. It's really not a business business. Right. But Frankenmuth, You're those talking are all millions, businesses. Millions. Those are all business businesses. And Frankenmuth does a really good job of bringing in tourists. Yes. Yes. So there's there's a customer and base to serve. No, no you got to do something yeah. other than eat chicken. You <laughs> no. can't eat chicken all day. No. And actually, that's what we're working on right now at the comedy series. One eight hundred Fun Town is Frank and Moose calling card. If you go on their website, it's everywhere. We're one eight hundred Fun Town, but everything is family oriented. Everything. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because there is, and it's wonderful. I have two kids. Like it's important to me. We have something to do all the time in that right. town. But the comedy series is trying to break in to Frankenmuth and open the door a little bit on some adult entertainment. Well, it's hard to do a lot of G-rated comedy. I mean, you can do <laughs> oh, it. Oh, yeah. But most comedians I know can probably give you five minutes. That's it. Yeah. yeah. It's really hard to get yeah. 15 good minutes mm -hmm. of clean comedy, and that's not the state of the art, if you would. Right. Exactly. So, so that that's kind of a tough well, get. So you almost have to change the culture rather than change the comedy to get good comics. Is that what you're thinking? Right. And that's what I'm trying. I'm, I'm really trying to get the culture in Frankenmuth to understand that if you don't like it, then stay away. It's okay, but there's a lot of people that do like it and do want it. Like, yeah, we maybe have, you can have like grown up night or something. We and, have a no, whole, no, name right. a theme to what you're doing. Yeah, that well, implies the, the comedy that it's shows. Adult. They know, we, like they we've kept them pretty light. R, but they you can still swear. You can still yeah. Do, I swore a lot. And yeah, they, and they loved it. They roared. Right, they loved it. So, yeah. but the thing is, is that you know, in the entertainment world, there's a lot of other options out there. Yeah. that I'm trying to. You get Frankenmuth to like, okay, let's try some other things too. Right. And we're working on it. It'll, it'll, it'll be a minute. And especially now everything's on hold because of the damn coronavirus. Right. But well, you know, I think you're very uh, strategic from a business standpoint. And when I belong to a small golf club, I used to tell the people on the board that look at these people are our customers, even mm -hmm. though they're members, they're our mm -hmm. customers from the time they park their car till the time they get in their car and leave. Yeah. What are they going to do in between? And if they're walking around the clubhouse, jumping on a cart, golfing and walking around the clubhouse and leaving, we're missing opportunities. Yeah. We want to, first of all, get them in the clubhouse mm -hmm. and we want to have something for them to do and a reason for them to stay. Mm -hmm. The longer they stay, the more drinks they buy, they're going to decide yeah. to eat there. I said, we need to have theme nights. We need to have nights where we're going to like, we're going to do the Super Bowl, Super Bowl party at the club and bring them in for that. You need to have other events yeah. and reason for people to spend money and, and not take money from them, but give them good value for their, their dollar. But when people come to Frankenmuth, they're coming to be entertained. Yes. And the, the restaurants, folks, in Frankmuth are unreal. Oh, Huge gosh. restaurants, Amazing. all theme-based, all family-based. You get a big, uh, typically a big chicken family dinner served mm -hmm. in big bowls. With yeah, It's just a big well, family dinner. Well, and people don't even style. understand what a family-style dinner is anymore. Like, you get your family gets seated, and they bring you out servings of each dish, and you can get it refilled. Yes. And it's like yes. on a turntable, and yes. you keep eating and yes. eating and eating and eating. Hey, I always, I always wondered this. <laughs> if, if, if they bring out, like, ten pieces of chicken, and you only eat five, what happens to the other five pieces when they go back into the kitchen? 
wouldn't you like to know? I would. I would. I would. I'm thinking they're coming out on the, the platter of the people right next to me. <laughs> I'm hit that microwave and hey, look, who knew? Guess we have what? more chicken. <laughs> who wants more chicken? <laughs> I don't know. Tomorrow we got chicken stew. <laughs> it was on. But once it hits your table. Yeah. No, no. They let you. You can get to go boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Not the stuff you take with you, but the stuff that goes back to the kitchen. Did they reserve uh, that? No, of course not. You think that all goes in the dumpster? Yes. You naive girl, I you. Do. Yeah. I, you've never I'm worked only, in a restaurant, I'm have only you? I'm speaking for Bavarian Inn, <laughs> who is my favorite. I definitely think that's the case. Yeah. Is the Bavarian Inn, it's not the white one, it's the other one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's my favorite, too. Bavarian Inn's amazing. Yeah. You know what? My kids used to want to go there on their birthday. Oh. And down in the basement, it's just like a big hallway with oh, restrooms. And also has just all of these trinket shots. Uh-huh. And it, they just draw everybody downstairs to do some shopping uh-huh. and buy a souvenir for Frankenmuth. Yeah. But we used to laugh because I always thought it stunk down there. It does smell weird. And I'd say, everybody's going down to the basement to fart. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> You eat upstairs, grandpa and grandma farting down yeah, the basement. because there's no bathrooms on the main level. I know, you have and to go to the basement. I don't think they ventilate as well as they could. <laughs> just saying, Frank, if you're listening, <laughs> ventilate. <laughs> they just put in those. It's been a big thing because in Frankenmuth, the city requires everything to keep its original outer you know, visual on yeah, the Yeah, the town. architecture, the German the, architecture. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and the Bavarian industry did their bathrooms downstairs, yeah. and it's those really fancy ones where it's all one counter, and you hold your hands under the water, then under the soap, then under the water again, then under the dryer, and it's all, you don't have to touch anything. Oh, I need that here for my guests. It's crazy, and it must have been crazy expensive, and everybody's like, whoa, you walk into this old building, and then there's this super High tech modern- stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's yeah, crazy. Really. It's crazy. Yeah, the wait staff also wears uh, German yep. Bavarian style. Lederhosen and Dirndls, yeah. Is that what they're called? Yeah. See, you yeah. even know. I, I don't know what it. they're called. So the, <laughs> Can I get some of those to have here yeah. just in case somebody wants to so play So the Lederhosen are the men's outfits. Oh, with no, the I don't care about that. Leather shorts, and they rumor has it that the cornstarch used in the kitchens is also used in the leather shorts. What for? for? Chafing. Because they're walking around in them all day. And these Germans got fat uh-huh. thighs, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Chafing. What are you about? If you're skinny enough, your thighs don't even rub. I don't so know. So if you ever go in a bathroom in Frankenmuth and you see white powder laying on the floor, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not shook what out you of think. somebody's pants. <laughs> it's not what you <laughs> think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It came out of Jeff's pants. <laughs> <laughs> He's shaking his leg in it's here. What are you doing? What you think? And, and what is what is the girls' outfits called? Uh, the. The Durndles. Durndles. Mm-hmm. All right. I have a funny Durndle story. Do you have a Durndle at home? So I don't anymore. I used to. Oh my I God. used to. You're so hot. Those. <laughs> so those like zip up the front, you know? Ah, do and they zip down the front it, too? Yes, it zips right. down the front. But you know that little shirt thing that covers the... The breasts. Yes. That's but, the, not, but the breasts, yeah, but the breasts aren't, aren't like behind the bib part. The breasts yeah, are still they're on top out of there. It. Yeah. yeah. It's like well, that's just a milk teeny. maiden kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It is, really. Is that wrong? Is no, that no wrong you're, right. Right. you're right. You're right. You're right. And, and uh, most people don't understand. That's just a little teeny tiny shirt that goes right under your bra. That doesn't go all the way down. Uh, and then it zips up. So like those meet right together. Oh. And I, w- I was wearing one that was way too tight. One time, uh, and I had to go to a conference and represent the group I was in in Frankenmuth. And on you the, were busting out. On the way home, I couldn't stand it anymore. I was like, oh, I got to unzip this thing. <laughs> I unzipped it, and, oh I, and I was so comfortable. And I, it was funny because it looked like I had a surgery. There was a zipper mark all the way down. Oh, my, my God. But I. Uh, and when the cop pulled you over, he was like, Listen, No, lady. I stopped to get gas. Oh, no. And I just didn't even think about it. Come on. You got out like that? Yeah. And then this weird, creepy truck followed me. So I stopped. With guys with later hoses Yeah, and he pulled up right next to my window, and I rolled my window down. He's like, hey, I'm (laughs) I'm staying over here at the Comfort Inn room, blah, blah, blah. My name is Steve. If you'd like to come over. And I was like, God, that was weird. I just, like, pulled away, and then I looked down, and I was like, oh, Uh, my God. You're advertising. Melissa! (laughs) I'm very irresponsible. No, well, hey, if you ever need, you know, you said you're short on cash right now. (laughs) For your shows. Yikes. You might pull that out of the drawer. I might need to get that out. <laughs> Work it. <laughs> well, that's a lot of information. That was a lot. I probably shouldn't have shared that. No, we no, 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 no. We should I, edit that out. No. Nah, 
<laughs> no, I appreciate that. Why are you sweating? I'm not, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just kidding. No, no, that's good. So that's what's oh. happening up in Frankenmuth. The, that's it's, Frankenmuth. A, it's a theme city. It is. And you've moved there. And you, you are married... Mm-hmm. And you have uh, two, two small boys. boys. Yep. How, how old are your sons? Uh, right now they're five and seven. Oh my God. We've just begun. The what? hostage situation is still undergo. You know, I wrote a book about that. <laughs> I do know that. Did I ever give you a copy of my book? No, you should. You should Look sign out it. Here. You should yeah. sign it. I right? can do that. Okay. Because I don't want just a book without a signature. Because I'm, you know, I'm probably not going to read it. You know, I sell back. these books. This is how I came around. You know this, right? That's fine. It just costs more with a signature. That's okay. all. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Did gotcha. you know I was a single parent? Uh, I did not. I think yeah. we've talked about this. Maybe briefly. Back in the 80s, when my kids were two and four, mm-hmm. uh, when I got divorced, uh, I wanted the kids. Yeah. And I was going to fight for full custody. I decided to only fight for half uh-huh. and I was a pretty decent parent. And, uh, but I think half of being smart is knowing what you're dumb at. Yeah. And I was willing to admit that I really didn't know what I was doing with kids. Uh-huh. And so if something didn't work, I changed it. Oh, instead of being stubborn going, well, this should make them want to go to bed. Right. I'm going, this isn't making them want to go to bed. Right. I right. got to find out a different way to do it. So I kept changing things until things were working. And I'm not kidding you. By the time my kids were like, four and six or five and seven, I had girlfriends or, or, uh, friends of mine, uh, their wives would call me up and say, how are you doing this? How do you get your kid to do that? They did that so well. And if I introduced you to my children, even at that age, they'd shake your hand, say, nice to meet you. They're very polite, well-mannered. If I said, come here, they'd drop what they're doing and they would run, run to me and say, what do you need? They would do what I told them when I told them. And, so people were looking for tips on parenting. And I thought, you know what? If I ever get a chance, instead of answering all these phone calls, I'm going to write all this down. Yeah. And so once I got uh, out of business, I decided to write that down. And I was going around lecturing on parenting for That's a while. That's awesome. And blogging on parenting, which is really weird for a, a man yeah. to be talking about parenting toddlers. Right. But it was about potty training and shyness yeah. and all those kinds of things. That's awesome. So, That's a great perspective, too, that people need. Well, you know, and now guys are looking for custody for their young kids. Mm-hmm. You know, I went down to... Uh, and, of course, you're not saying that moms are the lesser of the parents. No. You're I'm saying, saying if you're going to be a parent, you ought to know what you're doing. And, exactly. And you don't have to know anything except how to have sex to have kids. Mm-hmm. doesn't mean you're qualified to do anything. Right. And your parents might have been lousy parents. Might have been. I, I'm not saying... I don't think my parents were very good parents. Gotcha. But I was opened up, you know, what's going to work and... Right. Right. And so I think it's it's valuable information if you're going to be a parent and especially if you're going to be a single parent. Yeah. And nowadays. What a tough job. Well, you know what? It's kind of a perfect storm for parenting right now because people now follow their careers. Mm-hmm. So they might relocate and they aren't by their parents or grandparents. And it used to be grandma and grandpa lived next door or, mm-hmm. or around the block or at least yes. in the same city. And so you saw your parents all the time while you were parenting mm-hmm. and they could coach you. And you'd say, yeah, I don't know what to do, but Jimmy just doesn't, won't eat his food. Or, and they, they'd coach you. Yeah. Well, that's gone if you leave the state. Right. You aren't talking to mom and dad every day, probably, most cases. Right. And then half the people or more are getting divorced. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now you got to manage kids by yourself. And I know your husband's on the road, so he's mm-hmm. gone a lot. And that's even more difficult and to try and be good parent and bad parent and get them managed and get everything lined up. Right. And how to, how to figure this out without somebody to go to. So my book is a, um, it's a quick reference book. It's like four pages. If they won't stay in their bed at night, here's four pages. Here's the four basic rules. Here's a little funny story about it, why it worked for me. Here, try this. That's awesome. Yeah. So you just look it up, you read the thing, go, okay, 10 minutes later, I got an idea of what might work. Mm-hmm. So I, it's been out there on Amazon at Amazon.com. Look for Look Out I'm Parenting Here by Ted Moss. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> There's a plug for me. Yay. Yeah, buy yeah. my book. <laughs> Please. <laughs> no, but I don't I don't worry about that too much. People ask me if I uh, would ever do comedy about my kids. And I said, Dang, it was just hard work. Mm-hmm. It really wasn't that funny. Now, mm-hmm. do you do comedy about your kids? I do have a little bit, only because I get hired for so many clean shows ah. that I, I, with the local churches and stuff, I had to come up with some clean comedy. And yeah. people s- relate to that sure. kid stuff. And mine are still little. Now, here's something I never thought of is 
like my oldest is in second grade and he came home the one day and he said, mom, uh, you know, Charles was telling me that his mom was watching you on TV and yeah. like that just like blew his mind. Well, you know, we can stream everything through our yeah. TV now. And I do have a YouTube channel, oh, Melissa okay. Hager right. TV, and I'm actively building my YouTube channel. Right. And so they probably were watching some of that. And there's some stand up on there. And I thought, boy, I would uh, like we were really pri- I grew up on a farm. We were really private. Everything was very quiet. Don't right. make a big deal. Someone's going to notice us. Right. Blend I couldn't, in. I couldn't, yes, blend in. I could not imagine going to school and somebody saying, hey, I saw your mom on TV. I would have had a heart attack. I see you would have freaked out. Yeah. yeah. Like, so that, that must be weird. You're famous. Yeah, yes. that must be so weird for them. You know, but I don't know. Maybe it's kind of cool, though. Kind of. It's kind of cool. I have know you ever been recognized? Have you ever been out someplace and got yeah, recognized? Yeah, for How sure. How is that? Different. It's different. But it's just, uh, you know, that's a community thing. Like, I keep trying to tell people, I'm, two of my best friends live in Georgia, Atlanta. Yeah. And they're like, come down here, put on shows, come down here. I'm like, you know, part of the reason my shows work so well up here is because I know everybody. I've been right. up here my whole life, and I we just did the local farm tractor implement company that sells tractors to all the farmers. Yeah. We just did their holiday party. Really? And I knew every, I grew up with most of them. And then the other ones in there, I knew from being a kid and going in with my dad. Yeah. Like no one else is going to get those jobs. Well, you know, is it easier to perform for people that know you or don't know you? For me, it's people that know me. I love being in those crowds because I feel more comfortable when I'm at Mark Ridley's or, you know, one night stands. It's awkward at first until I get moving. Really? Yeah, because I don't get the big reactions that I do from the crowd work with the people I know because I know that Sammy just ran over his kid's bike because I saw it on Facebook and I can make fun of him and the whole crowd laughs. Right, right. I don't know the people that personally. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? No, I think that's a great point. I've actually only performed for four people in my whole career, stand-up career that knew me. Oh, really? Yeah, one time wow. I had like, yeah, one time I had my son-in-law because I happened to be out in Seattle mm-hmm. and I was just looking for something to do. He said, do you care if I come along? I said, no, it's just an open that's mic. Awesome. So he watched that. And then two guys out of a... Those two or three guys out of my golf league showed up at one show one time. And afterwards they said, hey, dude, you're kind of funny. I said, yeah, I know. I'm hilarious. <laughs> I've been telling you. That's I'm awesome. Hilarious. But every other time, I just soon not. Oh, yes. You know, I just soon be in front of strangers. I don't know if you remember them, but Steve and Don Dela Cruz, Don has the oxygen that she wears. Yeah, she no. definitely was at the show you were in. Yeah. They have not missed uh, one of my shows in three years. Wow. Like she is horrified right now that there's nothing going on. She can mouth every single one of my jokes, like my rehearsed jokes. She knows them all, but they come to laugh. Well, next. Well, let's give her a shout out because she's going to be listening to this show. Yeah, well, definitely. She will be. She definitely will be. My favorite, Melissa. I'm Hi, Don. Listen. <laughs> Glad I'm, you're listening, Don. Tell your friends. <laughs> share, please, on Facebook. <laughs> I miss her terribly. Don and Steve, I miss them terribly. I'm just used to seeing them two or three times a weekend. Yeah. Like that, they've become family, yeah. you know? Yeah. Can we talk about your husband? Is that okay with sure. you? Sure. You know, your husband is a long haul truck driver, is he not? Yes. And when Billy and I were on the road uh, and we spent, what, uh, 90 days in an RV going from truck stop <laughs> to truck stop. Oh, my God. And doing comedy across the co- whole country. It was fun. I, we did everything from Key West to L.A. and back. That's so cool. It was cool. Every day was a new town, new show. Mm-hmm. You know, if the show went well, they might say, stay over till tomorrow. We'll do another show. I mean, we, we did Houston and San Antonio and L.A. and uh-huh. Vegas and New Orleans. It was fun. We got wow. To, it was really a lot of fun. But... I had never lived on the road. Uh-huh. I had never stopped at a truck stop in my entire freaking life. <laughs> and we're staying at all these different truck stop places with all these truckers and mm-hmm. stuff. I'll tell you what, that's a different world. It is. It is. When you're on the phone at 10 o'clock at night talking to your husband, because he's just starting his day, but you hear a, like a knock on the window, you're like, what in the, who is that? 
It's and one of those hookers just at the one of them girls <laughs> trying to see if somebody's awake in there. Oh, my you God. Know? And it's like, put her on the phone. I'll talk to her. <laughs> I would on, love bitch. to chat with her. <laughs> yeah. Now, thankfully, you know, in the trucking world, too, there's owner operators. They own their trucks. Is it, now, yeah. What's your and husband? He works um, for USF Holland, which is a union company, okay. which is, again, growing up on a farm. We never had health insurance. I didn't know what the hell a union was. Right. And so, like, now he's in the Teamsters. That's been a very very interesting thing for me to learn. Of course, my my automotive industry family, my mom's whole side of the family is from the UAW. They're like, yeah, go yeah. Rob! <laughs> Union. And I'm like, what does this mean? So he gets a, they drive all night and then he gets a hotel every day. Based on where they're at, he gets put in a hotel so he gets a breakfast and then he can sleep in a bed. Holly, you're saying they, the whole company does that or yeah. does he have a partner he drives nope, with? No, USF Holland, the whole company does that. They're an amazing company. We're really lucky because he spent his first four years over the road, sleeping in a truck. And that is a miserable existence, in my opinion. Oh, and he doesn't have to sleep in a truck no, anymore. No, now he gets to sleep in a bed. He gets a shower in yeah, a, you that know, is so it's nice. just a whole different Well, there's thing. showers at truck stops, but you don't want to, you know, yeah. they're, they're miserable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely, good. which again, some owner operators choose that life because they own their truck and that's what they got to do. Well, it is a life too. It's not a career. Yeah, and you is. know, a lot of these guys are only getting two, three days off a month. And most of them are single. I've learned that a lot well, of the truckers. Well, there's a reason for that. Yeah. They're, yeah. That's a really they're hard the road. family life for yeah, sure. Well, yeah. yeah. You've got to be okay with being alone and being on the road. Yeah. Because it's just one truck stop after another yeah. truck stop. It's just, yeah. You know, I was thinking when I was on the road, I love the trucks. I love these big trucks. Mm -hmm. I think they'd be so fun to drive. And I like driving. Mm -hmm. When Billy and I went across the country, he drove like 150 miles. I drove everything else. <laughs> Honestly, really? I, well, to wow. me, it's like a puzzle. Yeah. I, I'm in a comfortable seat. Mm -hmm. I like the mental puzzle of figuring out the oh. traffic. I don't speed. I don't tailgate. I'm just cruising. Uh -huh. But I kind of like doing this puzzle while I'm listening to the radio or doing whatever. It just keeps my brain occupied. Very so, cool. Yeah, yeah. I just drove all the way from Orlando back here uh, about a week or so ago by myself. And I stopped and took uh, two naps on the way back, you know. But because I, I enjoy driving. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't mind doing that. It's actually fun. So uh -huh. I thought I would like to be a trucker. And then I found <laughs> out that I would never be home. Uh-uh. No, I'd be gone. Not if you want to make any real money. Yeah. Now, how often is your husband home? Um, he is home every Sunday and most of Monday. Oh, that's pretty good. Every Sunday. That's yep, good. Yep. So he's on a weekly out. Oh, you so know? He, has a, he has a standard route he drives? Yep. So, and then how it works is they have to have like a 48-hour reset every so many oh. hours. So oh, yeah. sometime Kind of like late. airplane pilots. They got to yeah, keep them fresh. Exactly. So, okay. yeah, it works out. I mean, the DOT regulates them pretty harshly especially now they're on electronic logs so you can't fudge your numbers like truck drivers used to be able to fudge their numbers and like skip yeah, their brakes sure. and stuff sure but, but now, now they're tracking them now they're tracking them so like they have to have a break every so often they have to have this 48 hour reset every right. week and um which the guys over the road you know that's why they team drive there's partners so yeah. then the and other then one takes over and right. they go so when his wheels are moving that's when he's making money so yeah. they want him moving like I, a lot of people don't know this I, I, now I joke, we call him shit in a bag, Bob, but this oh, isn't, God. that's not a real story. Well, it's I don't not know. A, it sounds like a real one to me. If joke. you know these truckers, it's I know there's, <laughs> I know, I know there's pee in a bottle, Benny. There's yeah. a lot of those guys out that's there. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. Yeah. Shit in a bag, Bob was a joke I did for a really long time until yeah. people really started asking my husband about oh, my it too much. And I, he's like, can you They're please, like, is your name Bob? <laughs> please stop calling me shit in a bag, Bob. I was like, oh, okay, God. sorry. But yeah, pee in a bottle, Benny. They all like, my husband takes a Gatorade bottle. And again, it's an emer oh my God. it's an emergency plan yeah, only. Right. But yeah, right. But while yeah. they're driving, they're making money. Like yeah, that's I know. If you if you pass a trucker and he has a soothing look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine if you're taking so you're going through heavy traffic in a big city to get off of the expressway to stop, go to the bathroom, get back on. That yeah. could kill an hour. I know, I know. So, but they do stop for gas and they do oh, stop yeah, for food for sure. But I think a good tip is never pick up a half full Mountain Dew bottle <laughs> on an exit ramp. No, no, that that's probably terrible idea. Probably no. not the do you want. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, definitely yeah, not. All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. I, well, yeah, I want to do, you know what? I, we got to finish up, but I want to do one more thing. And I always do this with everybody because I'm old and I'm pathetic, but you know, I'm single. Okay. And you know, I'm dating uh-huh. and I've been dating online for six years uh-huh. and I have yet to find a good companion. I'm sure it's them, not you. <laughs> it's her, isn't it? It's, it's not me. It's, it's not me. It's. It's her, isn't it? It's her, right? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. No, I think I think there's I think it probably is me. I think my standards are too high. Well I think I'm too picky. My not- vision is still too good. <laughs> <laughs> I actually you know what? I I was out on a date recently and the girl asked me what uh she said, what are your disqualifiers? What are the things that you just will not tolerate? And I said, I don't think I have any of those. You know, I will tolerate a lot of things if there's other good features. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have the good features and you just got the bad ones, I'm going to pass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and she was a nice enough girl, but. She's always a butt. Yeah, well, she had a lot of drama. Uh-huh. And she had, you know, I'm going to move out of my house. And she said, do you want to hear about my ex? And I'm like, no. no. And she said, no, no, I should tell you this is really. And I said, no. Honestly, I told her four times, no. And then she told me anyhow, and I'm like, all what right. In the world. Yeah, I don't think we're going out again. Mm-hmm. But I'm not saying that. I'm going, yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm going to hear this shit. Yeah. And I don't care about your ex. I don't want to tell you about mine. You want to hear about mine? <laughs> Let me tell you about my battles. You know what? So I need somebody positive, upbeat, mm-hmm. kind of happy. I don't want them to be intimidated. I also need somebody mm-hmm. who's not shy. If you're shy, you're going to hate me. We're going to go someplace. I'm going to be talking shit right. with people, and you're right. going to be standing in the corner. It's not going to be comfortable. So I need a good match, and I don't seem to be having very much luck. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, my qualifications are pretty bad. I'm 67 years old. Not a lot of people looking for a happy-go-lucky 67-year-old guy. <laughs> Just saying. You know, it's, not, it's not what they're imagining. Everybody thinks it's online shopping right. with unlimited supply. Not D- wish list, but it isn't like that. It's every relationship. There's good things and bad things. Uh-huh. And it's a matter of how much of this shit can you tolerate in order <laughs> to enjoy this stuff over here. Yeah. And that's true with everybody. Yeah, for sure. But I'm asking you, what should I do? Seriously, <laughs> what should I do to try and get a lady in my life? Cause mm. I honestly, I really miss that. And I'd really like to have that. Yeah. Well, I will tell you that I am, Definitely not an expert in that field because I have the most unconventional marriage that there is. People ask me all the time, they're like, you're alone 95% of the time. How do you even call that a marriage? And and it works really well for us. I right. I had two kids. My husband did not come to one ultrasound. He barely made it to the hospital and I love him to death. I were both, we both met later in life. We were, you know, I was in my thirties. He was, or I was in my late twenties. He was in his late thirties. We had both been very independent, no kids. It is really an amazing match. Now there's times I'm very frustrated and I wish I had more help, but then there's other times where I'm like, oh man, I'm so glad I'm alone today. <laughs> yeah. I do whatever I want, so, but see that match worked out. It worked but my out. question is how do I find that person? Uh, when, that's, that's that unique combination that will work with me when you're so let me ask you this when you're looking online yes now six years in you said yeah right yeah have you come across some of the same people like they come up again they're up some of them up are they're up still i don't know why you say again <laughs> okay, it's like okay. me i'm still up so it's and my not- picture's still up there <laughs> okay yeah, and some point. are on multiple sites like me but i think if you're on multiple sites and you right. catch me on multiple sites we're both on multiple sites. We're right. Th- it's ice fishing. You're just yeah. digging holes. You just still yeah, are. Well, yeah. Well, you don't know where the fish are. So what about people actually setting you up with live people? What if you take a break off of there for a you bit? You know what? That's an interesting idea. And I've had a couple of those offers. Mm-hmm. And, and you tell me this is wrong thinking. But it seems to me that the odds are whoever they set you up with is not going to work. Okay. You know, that there's probably a 90% chance, nine out of 10 times, it's going to be like, you know what? There's a lot of good things, but How just no that chemistry. different from what you're doing? I, well, yeah, it's different like this because the person in the middle that sets you up is your friend and their friend. Mm-hmm. And anytime this happens, one of the people think it's working and uh, the other one doesn't, doesn't think it's working. So there's always a good guy and an asshole. Uh-huh. So now this person in the middle is like, why don't you like so-and-so? And uh-huh. you, what are you going to say? Because well, she's a whiny bitch. I, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> you can't say that. You, 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 Maybe I you mean, have to. No, no, you can't. So all of a sudden, not only did I not get a partner, mm-hmm. I've alienated my friend. Mm-hmm. And 
And now they invite me to a party and this person shows up and you got all these awkward things. It's like, I was sitting here one day and see that brown house right out that window, right down there. Mm -hmm. There's a single lawyer lady that was probably 52 years old living there. Mm -hmm. She said hi to me online. And I'm like, hi. And she said, uh, you sound interesting and you're attractive. And no, 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 no. I said, yeah, and I'm looking at your house. <laughs> she said, what? I said, I'm your neighbor. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, because I can't date my neighbor. Yeah. If I date my neighbor, it doesn't work out. It's still my neighbor. Yeah. It's going to suck because somebody's going to be a bad guy. So yeah, how bad do your relationships end? I mean, I had I don't have any. five people at my wedding reception that I had slept with. Like, I, my All stuff, right. Well, my, you're I'm, from a small town. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> There weren't a lot of choices. They were my cousins. Yeah. I'm yeah. just saying. Snowball, rotate. Isn't that bad? Why does stuff end that bad? It should just, it like, okay, hey, this isn't working. Talk uh, it out and move on. Yeah, well, you, you try to go through the, it's not you, it's me conversation. Yeah. yeah people don't buy that shit. Because like, I would just, I think the approach could be softer, maybe. That yeah. just sounds like, okay, perhaps. So you got a friend you want to set yeah. me up with? <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Is your mom single? Uh, she is. Her. All right. Perhaps my friend I'm thinking is of. Is she bubbly? She <laughs> Is she smoking hot? Has she been on TikTok? I really like the cute girls on TikTok. Oh, Uh, maybe a little bit. I got a big TikTok. You 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 should see my TikTok. It's insane. Yeah. No, my mom's an accountant. She has a great job. She's independent. But again, she has a she has had trouble dating because she has a certain standard she's looking for, and she doesn't seem to be able to find that. You know, I'm not sure I'm going to meet her standard either. In the tuxedo. <laughs> no, no. The, my problem is sometimes I'm too funny too fast. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, people don't people, want to hear dick jokes right off the bat. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. you got to work up to that. Might so. be a good one for you to go out with. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. And I don't even like you that much anyway. So oh, if we become not friends, it's yeah, not that You were on of one deal. show, dude. I, and then you stood me up. What the hell? What kind of guy are you? She's going to walk out of here going, I'm never doing that shit. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> All right, well, let's end this thing. You got anything you want to plug before we get out of here? I wish I did have something to plug, but I just go to the comedy series.net to see when we start doing shows again. I am so glad you came in here. <laughs> oh, this has been so much fun. Oh, thank you. No, no, no. What I... a great studio and a great thing you're doing for people that have something interesting to listen to. Yeah, this hats is interesting off. as hell. Hats off yeah. to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll see. We got three listeners that thought this was interesting. <laughs> the feedback is, yeah, I was okay. I was bored. I forgot to turn it off. Just to clear up a couple things i have not slept with any of my cousins my grade <laughs> my grade school principal does still conversate with me and i will never steal a car again my there you- <laughs> <laughs> that's on the record <laughs> yeah, exactly all right thanks for tuning in folks melissa thanks for being here thanks for having me you're a great guest good job i appreciate your friendship i appreciate the fact you came and talked to me who's your daddy uh, <laughs> it's not me <laughs> well not yet i have met your mother <laughs> Maybe your stepdaddy. <laughs> All right, we're out. Take care, everybody. All righty, we got to get out of here. But I want to give a shout out to everybody that's been listening and sharing the podcast. I appreciate that. And of course, a special thanks to Melissa Hagar for being our guest today. Also, I want to mention that Ted Talks Too Much has been put on the ultimate list of podcasts to binge listen to during the quarantine. Who oh, no. knew? You guys apparently are ahead of the curve. But thanks for being here with us. I hope you had fun. But until next time, be safe, be good to each other, and try, just try to be happy. I'm Ted Moss, and those are my thoughts.